welcome to the Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast. And thank you for joining us this month as we are sharing with you some of the recent conversations that we've had on our program, The Difference. And recently, some of our friends from Orlando, Florida, Rodney and Michelle Gage, came to Cornerstone Church and were discussing a book that they co-wrote and released entitled Family Family Shift. Shift. And, and, you know, you have to be very careful when you say that title because <laughs> if you can't say it too fast, can't say it too fast or too, too frequently. But <laughs> what they were talking about was how you can intentionally make a decision to improve the quality of your family life. And I think this is in some cases such a powerful thought, yes, such a simple thought. And it is a game changer because, you know, the longer you're in ministry and, and you get to be around situations Oftentimes we get to hear, well, we grew apart or you get to hear yeah. things aren't the same. And, and, you know, there's all kinds of situations, circumstances and scenarios that create those crises and those problems. But if you grew apart, you can't can... you grow together? Yes. And, and if things aren't like they used to be, can't you reset them to make them what they were? You know, these are just some simple questions that lead into the content that Rodney and Michelle have shared, and I really felt that it was a powerful message to share, and I hope that it is something that is a blessing to you uh, if you're married, if you're a sibling or you're a child or you're a parent that's trying to figure out how to connect in a more meaningful way with your family because those are the people that God in his sovereign grace put you in that household. It's not an accident that you are who you are. And if you need a family shift, this is a great conversation for you to listen to. So our guests today are Rodney and Michelle Gage, and they've written a book entitled Family Shift. And I think it's not only an appropriate title, but it's something that a lot of people probably need and don't realize it because in many cases, families are today being defined by culture. They're being defined by situations. They're being uh, really hijacked by a number of things. And, and there's a place where you can go and look and find out what the family is supposed to look like, accomplish, and how it's supposed to generationally succeed. So what, what is it about family shift that people need to know? Well, as you just hit on, there's a major cultural shift that's happening. And unfortunately, that shift is causing many families, couples to drift further apart rather than closer together. And I think they have good intentions with a lot of the choices they make and things that they often think will draw them together. But so often those good things over time can sometimes actually cause challenges and setbacks or maybe just really cause a subtle drift that they never thought would ever happen. And so our hope and really the purpose for this book is really, if anything, is just to help people understand that, hey, if you find yourself maybe drifting away from what could be or should be, or what that intended dream was, you know, originally um, set out to, to accomplish, well, it doesn't mean that there's no more hope for you. Correct. You know, yeah. you can stop right where you are yeah. and you can make a shift. Sure. And you can begin moving in the direction that you really want to, you know, to move into. And you can ultimately achieve what it is you're desiring to achieve in your marriage and your family relationships. It's just how do you do that? And yes. we wanted to come alongside and not just give them hope, but give them how-tos so they yeah. can make that shift that will ultimately make a lasting difference in their marriage as well as their, in their family relationships. Well, and I think the how-to is a very important factor because... One of the things that never made sense to me, but I, I've heard it, you've heard it, a lot of people get to hear it, we grew apart. Part, yes. um, I, I think to myself, if you grow apart, could you grow together? Yeah. You know, I mean, if, 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 you, if you went this way, could you go back that way? Absolutely. And sometimes they get to a point where they think, it's just easier to step out of this relationship than turn back into, into it. it. Yes. So some of the how-tos are, are in your book, but also uh, you identify ways that people drift. Yeah, because you have an acronym for drift. Yeah, it, Tell right. us about. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it's it's very easy to identify. Okay, here's where we are, but it's more important to know. Okay, this is where we're headed. So, right. so how does the drifting start? Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you want to take first, it on. <laughs> the first letter is uh, D. And it's mm-hmm. disappointments. You know, they hit us all. What? Disappointments hit and us all. Marriage involves disappointment. 
Oh You've never been disappointed, have you? Never. Made, never. Made. never. <laughs> 17 years pulse. of successful yeah. achievements. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. We all have disappointments, and it can cause us to drift. Mm -hmm. um, regrets, things that we did, and and we look back and we regret. It can cause us to drift and or away things you from wanted the, to do and yes, didn't do. Right. right. You know, sometimes I talk to couples, and it's like, well, I really wanted to fill in the blank, right. and they didn't feel like they were supported. So you know, I mean, that mm -hmm. disappointment, regret kind of thing led to an offense that they were like, I'm, I'm holding this, and you're sitting there going, well, let go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you got disappointment, regret, what's next? Isolation, and mm. this is huge oh. in yes. our culture, you know? So I'm mad, I don't want to talk. Right, yeah. yes. I'm fine. Feel alone. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And then regrets, drift, or excuse me, the uh, disappointment, regret, isolation, and then frustration. Frustration. Yeah. yeah. It can yeah. get us get us bad okay. and then the tension begins mm. and okay. then we just I begin thought T to... was teach you a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's tension. No, tension. <laughs> well and, yeah. and, and it's interesting because I think anybody who has been in a relationship at, at some level can recognize All each of those things. I mean, they, they happen in friendships, they happen in business True. relationships. Yeah. But the thing about marriage relationships in, in the world that we live in today is as the culture shifts, the quit option is the easy option. Yeah. The yeah. stay option is the one that requires the work, yeah. you know. And really the whole drift um, analogy, if you will, you know, that's not the root problem. That's, that's really the symptoms. And that's yeah. where I think, you know, many couples or families who find themselves drifting further apart, mm -hmm. you know, what is it they look for? And if they feel any of those things, if they see any of those, any of those things happening in their, in their home or in their marriage, well, those ought to be some red flags. Yes. And they probably know, already know that they're there, but the question is, is okay, well, how do, we, how do we deal with where we are and how do we work through that in order to get our family back or, or get our marriage relationship back? And mm -hmm. so, again, I think there is hope no matter how far away they may have drifted, yes, right. but it's never too late to start yeah. doing what's right. It's never yeah. too late to go back and recapture what perhaps has been lost. And, you know, I think the main thing is for a lot of people is just to know that, you know, with God's help, they can overcome whatever it is that's caused yes, them, right. you know, to end up at a place they never intended to be. Yeah, and I think a big thing for people to also put into the equation is want to. Mm. You know, there are uh, oftentimes it's unfortunate that people don't want to be honest about what do you want to do? Yeah. You know, do you want to fix this? Or do you want to stay offended by it? Because Absolutely. sometimes they can drift and, and get to such a place that their offense has become their identity. Their regret has become their identity. Absolutely. Their disappointment has become their identity. And they're afraid they're not going to have anything to talk about if, if they let go yeah. of that and start Absolutely. to work back towards getting together. Yeah. So yeah, we've talked about drift. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the reason, when people get to that place where they are not where they want to be, mm -hmm. they've drifted. Now, how do they shift to get back to where they, where they belong? Yeah, you know, a few moments ago, I was, I was going to just add to the fact that, you know, you can't become who you want to be by remaining who you are. Oh, so at good. some point, you yeah. have to make that decision to say, okay, there's a shift that needs to happen. That's, if you're taking notes, write that write down. That down. <laughs> yeah. so, say it again. <laughs> so I think, you know, when you think about making a shift and starting to move in a positive direction, I think it really begins, and we have another acronym for SHIFT, yes. mm -hmm. and we, we really do this because we often say, you know, Parents, husbands and wives, they need more than just prayer. They need a plan. plan. So yeah. give me some hope. Give me some handles. What can Faith we do? Faith works. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So the S simply stands for, was for start with the end in mind. And this is all, this is all about a shift in overall direction. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is for any couple, for any family, is really sit down and ask themselves some hard questions. And really it begins with, okay, well, what is our vision for our marriage? What is our vision for our children? What is the vision for our family? Who do we ultimately want to become? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as the scripture teaches us in Proverbs, you know, where there is no vision, the people perish. perish. Yeah. And so therefore, when there's no vision in the marriage, when there's no vision in the home, the marriage dies, the family dies. And so we have to resurrect that vision. And so we have to start with the end in mind. So it's asking those what could be, what should be questions about where we ultimately want to go. And then the H simply stands for hold to core values. And this is all about a shift in focus. And so it goes back to, okay, what is it that's important to us? What do we really believe? What are the, 
What are the guardrails and guidelines that are gonna navigate our family so that we can make wise decisions to get us moving in the direction that we ultimately want to become, or ultimately want to end up in? In a lot of places, that really defines your yes and your no. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was a kid, if I went into my dad's room and I asked him a question, 99% of the time, I already knew what the answer was. And sometimes I was hoping he might have changed his mind, <laughs> but, but I knew what his yeses and nos would be, you yeah. know. And I think that that's an important thing for families to really define because unfortunately, sometimes your children will act like saboteurs. You know, they try to get between yeah. mom and dad. If they know dad's going to say no, maybe we can work mom towards a yes and leverage her yes against his oh, yeah. no. And if mom and dad, the if they have the same core values right. and they understand what the no is, yeah. then, then, you know, that stops right away. Absolutely. You know? And what that does is it helps you also when there's a myriad of choices and options that families have today and to sign up it. for all oh, these yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end of it, and there's nothing wrong with a lot of those things, Correct. but what having strong, healthy core values does, it puts your priorities in perspective, but it helps you to be able to say no to the good so you can say yes to the best. Yes. And that helps you keep moving forward towards your vision. And then Without the, guilt. Exactly. Because there's a lot of people who be like, why aren't you doing this? Everybody's doing this. And you're yeah. like, I got to make the best decision right. for everybody who sleeps at my house. Right. You know? Absolutely. Right. So yeah. Important. And so, you know, I often say that the new trinity, if you will, is the three A's. It's athletics, arts, and academics. Well, those, all three of those things are wonderful things, but those things in and of themselves can sometimes compete with the things that matter most. Yeah. And so you got to hold tight to those core values and the things that truly matter. And so when you think about the start with the end in mind, hold the core values, and then we go to the whole issue of identifying what we call your GPS. And this, like so this is all about a shift in motivation. So GPS simply stands for your goals, your passions, and your struggles. And so when you think about your vision going in a certain direction, when you think about the core values that you hold tight to, that are your guardrails, your guidelines, that keeps you moving in the direction you want to go, the GPS is there to really help reinforce really the things that you begin to break down as far as your goals, and then what it is that, that, you know, that you're passionate about, because everybody's wired different in the family. Thanks. So we have personality tests at FamilyShift.com. People can go to learn about, about their five different can you temperaments. Fail? Yeah, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> yeah, everybody has their own bent. But when you think about the passions that are unique to us, those can channel a lot of positive energy. It's fuel. Gives focus, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it can bring new hope and new life to yeah. dreams and aspirations that we have. Yeah. Pa passion is fuel, and fuel feeds fire. Absolutely. The question is, what's what? burning? Yeah. You know, yeah. is this a good burn or a bad burn? Absolutely. Because there's passion wow. involved if it's burning. Right. You know, and, and one of the challenges back to the drift is there's a lot of people that lose passion. Mm -hmm. they, they, they lose their fuel. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, Absolutely. and so the GPS goals and, and passion, passion and then struggles. struggles. Yes. So this is the honest part where you have to know what you're not yeah. good at. I think so right? often it, it is. I think what happens a lot of times, the, the weaknesses sometimes, you know, can be the thing that everybody it's kind of puts their focus on. But at the same time, sometimes we have setbacks, right. those unexpected things that happen. And so rather than allowing that to kind of sabotage a marriage or sabotage a family, well, I believe our struggles can also become our greatest story. Mm -hmm. I believe our pain can become even our greatest platform. And so it's a matter of leveraging those struggles into something positive so that we can leverage that in a way that makes a difference in other people's lives. And of course, the, the next letter as we keep moving forward is the F, which simply stands for find uh, life-giving friendships. And so that's all about a shift in reinforcement associating with the right people who are in alignment with your vision, your values, and all the things that you truly are passionate about. And it might yeah. mean that you have fewer friends. Yes. <laughs> Almost your, always yeah. it means that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's one you of know, the greatest things we can teach our kids I was yeah. is how to find. You keep. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, it's not only known by the company you keep, but, you know, as I grew up, it became very apparent that there were people that were in my life for a season, and maybe it was a sports season and maybe it was a school season, but right. there was that day where the path I was on and the path they were on could not be the same unless one of us dramatically changed. Absolutely. And that's, that, that's yeah. not 
when you choose friendship over your future. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you say, right. God bless you, see you down the road. Absolutely. You know, I got you in pictures, but we're going this way. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And that can be a very difficult you know, transition in yes. life. It's always hard. Yes. But at the same time, we have to align ourselves with people who are like-minded, who share the same vision and values. Mm-hmm. Because life's too short to right. get distracted yes. by... Right relationships are going to get you distracted or get well, you... And there's always a new friend waiting away. up the road. Yeah. Yes. And when you choose the path God wants you on, he's got he's somebody waiting for you up there saying, hey, I've been looking for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? And the yeah. tea? Yeah. The tea, the tea is teach. teach by example. Yeah. Teach by example. Nothing Absolutely. greater than that. Yeah. And that's, you know, it, that's in many ways somewhat obvious. But when you right. think about it, you know, we have to be who we want our children to become. Because our children ultimately will become who we are. Correct. And so we reproduce who we Whether are. Whether you want it or not. You right. better believe it. Yeah. So yeah. they're watching us how we live. They're listening to how we talk. And we have to be mindful of that, but make sure that we are intentional with everything that we do. Absolutely. Because we want to leave our kids more than just with memories, which are great. But ultimately, our, our intention is to leave them a legacy. And equipped to succeed. Absolutely. Yes. You know, no I mean, doubt. when you talk about teach by example, I can speak to that because I have a very real and present example in my life. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how many times at this age and stage in my life with 17 years of marriage and four kids, I go, I've seen dad do this. You know, and if nothing else, it gives you the confidence to know if if he could, I can too. You yes. better believe it. You yep. know, I may not remember all the steps, but he survived. You know, what I'm saying absolutely. And, and so that's a big part of it. You know, you're hearing a lot of information coming at you in a very quick hurry. It sounds simple, but simple is not always easy, which is why mm-hmm. you need to get this book, Family Shift. I so enjoyed having Rodney and Michelle Gage with us. I love their acronyms. I was writing them down. I was going to say, I know why you I, enjoyed them. You because you know me with you, acronyms as an ICU a, nurse. As a nurse, I'm, I'm everything's about, an acronym. Yes. Yeah. ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. So when they started doing the shift, I was like, wait a minute. Start with the end in mind. H, hold on to your core values. I, identify your GPS. And GPS F. is its own acronym, yes. Goals, Passions, and Struggles. And then F, find life-giving friendships, and T, teach by example. So those are things that I could take, and I encourage you, if you listen to this podcast, share it with somebody you know, write down the acronyms, keep them on a little notebook card or something that you can remind yourself. But um, it was just something to teach me that as a mom um, to be more intentional with my children my family, and that I can... I can do that shift. Well, and and there are five simple things to remember, but I just need to give people fair warning. They can certainly be a challenge to uphold because, you know, for example, start with the end in mind. That requires some patience. It requires you to respond instead of react. And, And sometimes I know as a parent, one of the things that I'll be guilty of doing is you react instead of creating the proper response. And, and sometimes you react because you've had a hard day and you're just filled with frustration and then something happens. But, you know, when you start with the end in mind and you think about where we want to end up in this situation, then you make a better decision, which requires a response instead of a reaction. Or, for example, find life-giving friendships. Mm. Every one of us knows what it's like to have that relationship where you know you're going to have to encourage. You know you're going to have to listen to them vent. You know you're going to have to put up with a long list of complaints and and skepticism and doubt. And when you get done with that conversation, it's just exhausting, you know, and and you you sit there and these are the people that when they call your phone, you just look at it and go, not now, because you don't have 45 minutes of your life to drain. And yet there's other folks that when you hear from them, it's just Life-giving. the absolute opposite because you know that you're going to feel better when that conversation is over. You're going to think better when that conversation's over. If you have a question, they're going to either offer advice or give some counsel that brings you to a conclusion and an answer. And those relationships are worth keeping. They're worth maintaining. The thing about them is there's only 24 hours in a day. So if if you've got a life drainer, you can exchange it for a life giver and and you have to be intentional about that. So there's a shift that you can make that helps your family become the family that God created it to be. 
And I pray that that's something you intentionally desire to do. And I encourage you to look up Rodney and Michelle's book and and give it an opportunity to work in your household and give you and your family uh, the promises of God coming to life because you're standing upon his word and putting it to action. It will not return void. void. We want you to bring your family and come join us at Cornerstone Church on Sundays. We have our three services available. We would love to see you in person. You can still catch us online. And we would love to connect with you through our Facebook or Instagram, YouTube channel, Hagee Ministries. Absolutely. We're everywhere. Do you know we even have a Hagee Ministry app now on the Apple Box? Well, I'm at church on Sunday, so I don't know how people (laughs) watch online. You don't know, but when I was watching online, I could go to my Apple Box and find the Hagee Ministry app. Yeah. And now I can stream sermons on there. I can also find the Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast. It's my, on the app too, babe. My first job was unloading fruit trucks. So when I hear apple boxes, I just break out in a sweat. So anyway, uh, it is something that we have created an opportunity for every possible path of digital engagement to be taken. So whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Apple TV, uh, if you're not in the San Antonio area, please tune in. And if you are, come see us. We look forward to seeing you soon.